Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. We wanted to take the time to give you guys a, another crop update. It's October 13th today. We just got done mounting the picker, so if you haven't already, make sure to check out those videos or um, stay tuned for them. I'm not sure when I'll post them. We wanted to talk a little bit about how the cover crops are turning out and how the corn's coming along. So first, starting off with the cover crop here, it's a oat and rye mix. Is about it, half and half. Yeah, and your total seeding rate is what, 100? I don't know if I had it set at 100, but I just kind of went about what the book would recommend and what I did last year, really. So it was half and half rye and oats, and um, this oats wasn't ran through the cleaner. So you get a little bit of straw in there, so you can even see once in a while, but every fourth, fifth round, I'd have to check my openers. You know, yeah, there's a like here we had a plug drawer where it wasn't closed. But it really doesn't matter. I mean, it, you know, for all the time it takes to clean it, it wasn't really worth the time, but we just had to watch that. But anyway, it's really. And what, what, I don't, I'm trying to remember when we... I think it was September 19th or 20th, somewhere in there. Because we chopped this that we're standing in right now. Uh, it would have been like September 13th, 15th, somewhere in there. 15, yeah. And then it was just several days later. And I already had my rye ordered ahead of time. They brought it to me so that, you know, you can get it. Because everyone calls at once and the weather turns nice. And so then we had it ready to go. So as soon as I uh, finished the silo, the next day, we dug into the drill out and got it in. And that's the key, to get it in early enough so you get your warm weather to really get it started. Yeah. Now this stuff, if we get any kind of spring at all, this is going to be easy a foot tall or better before we're oh, able la to. Last year was. If any of you watched that moldboard plowing video, you know how yeah. thick that And that's how was. I like to see it. You know, it was still young enough yet to give us all kinds of nutrient value and yet it was um you know it was where you wanted it but i don't see this being any erosion issues or nothing like a lot of the rise guys it, it's already november it's cold it's barely germinates it really doesn't do anything for you in the fall and then if you get an earlier spring where you want to get started because the weather's dried out get your crops in you don't really let your cover crop do what it should have done do what it needs to do that's the advantage of the 50 50 mix too with the oats is the oats really takes off fast too in the fall yep. and gives you even more cover so then if you did have a problem with erosion in the fall you got you got a nice cover before the snow sets up. so oats is cheap we have our own and then that freezes off by the time you get into december that's pretty much all and it gives your field almost a kind of a yellow tint but then your rye, you know, there's still that that's in there with it. it. Yeah, so you added even more um, organic matter and like a chaff. Kind of got a double deal. Yep. And it's, I mean, I've had where the, we've had one fall, that's got to be six, seven years ago now, but where it was so early that it, um, the oats almost headed out before it froze. And the rye was still quite short. So for whatever reason, the rye didn't take off till spring. So we actually kind of had a double cover crop going there. And then speaking of cover crops, you've been doing it for how many years now? Like it's oh, been goodness. a decade probably, huh? Or more. I would think 10 years now. And it was kind of one of them things where when we grew up in the 80s, it was always when the when the corn silage was done, get out the moldboard plow and get it plowed as soon as you can get it, as long as the ground conditions are fit. And even after corn picking or or shelling, you know, the bedding was off, you you did your tillage and then you would get better results in the spring. Your soils would settle out nicer, they'd work nicer. We noticed that, so we do it where the cornfields that we're gonna put new seeding in in the spring, those are the ones I plan on doing fall tillage. So then they mellow out oh, over yeah. the winter and that kind of breaks down and you get a nice seed bed. And so then you just go through it more or less, your finer, your diggers and your, your finishing tools more and it ends up, yep, giving you a real nice settled out seed bed. It's night and day and not every spring it works out that way, but for the most part, it's always better to till in the fall. It's almost where your, your frost is doing a little tillage for you too then yeah it's helping kind of break up but then you got and... your you know you got some erosion issues possibly depending on what kind of fall and spring you get you know but then you got ahead too and that was the thing if you had a drier fall go get it go get it done because we've had a lot of wet bottoms where i grew up and on this farm there's a little of that too not as much but anyway if the conditions are fit you wanted to get your plowing in so then we started doing his cover crops. And then some guys commented quite a bit in the spring about um, why didn't we harvest that, that rye? Yeah. And so what we're doing all winter, we're manuring this. Yep. A lot of bedding manures. And I mean, 
I could have, um, we could have grazed it even, but the issue with grazing is, is all our regular pastures are growing just as fast as the rye. So if we don't get the cows on that, that grass gets old. So we do have quite a bit of pasture. So it almost, I think if we were in a situation where you were strapped for feed, then it would be uh, something. Yeah. But this way, because if you were to harvest it, then you probably had to put you know, you're not getting that nutrient value back. Well, you're robbing more from it, but it's kind of like double cropping, which, yes, you're right. You can take advantage of that if, if you really if need, need to. If need be. But, th but, I mean, but with our case, you're just well, you're improving we, your soil fertility. Right. And we instead. manured a lot, so it's kind of like we didn't have to... I mean, we do put starter in, and my starter was mostly nitrogen, not much of the phosphorus and potash. I think it was just 5.5. Five. I think it was like a 25.5, I think, our starter is, something like that. There's no need to add all that stuff when you when you're putting it on. And I've heard some of the crop farmers saying, you know, you cattlemen, you dairy farmers are lucky you got all this manure. I said, well, if you want to get so lucky, buy some of these cows and you can be just as lucky. You know, there's kind of a trade off, but in a way it's, it's like we never really take away from this farm. It's always, yeah. Everything gets put back. Like the only thing that leaves the farm is the milk and a few of the heifers you sell, but. Right, but, you got your beef you're selling, but you're, you're still, your yes. fertility never really leaves. No, it's, you're always, it's always more because, for instance, we buy wheat straw. I look at that like buying potash in a way, you know, so we put it under our cows. It gets them in our manure. It helps keep our manure where it belongs and all that. So there's some advantages. So this farm, we're only building our soils as, you know, as you go on, where if you're a crop farmer, you, you take it away. You got to yeah, you you, bring you, it back. You got to put it back somehow. Somewhere eventually. And there's a handful of farms around here in these hills that... Where they were rented for years, and seems like it, you know, over the last 10, 12 years, some of these farms is three, four different renters. And then you always hear about it that uh, that farm is so wore down, and nobody wants to really put the big money into it. Yeah, unless you got a long term rental agreement or something, it's hard for a crop farmer to justify putting lime on and dumping potash on. And it takes a lot, and it's so expensive, and yes, there's no guarantees. So, yeah, here that's the best part. So the cover, I just love it. I love to see everything green. And we've, we've been kind of, we're, you know, we grew up with that moldboard plowing. And of course there wasn't nearly as much corn ground. Everybody had cattle. So I would say two thirds of the, all your work land was sod anyway, you know, so you kind of had a lot of this anyway, but today with row crops and especially in this area, we're in kind of a hilly area that this. And speaking of fertility, when we did our soil samples, our corn on corn ground with, that we do the cover crop on was the, the best out of all of them. It, oh, yeah. So it shows that the program my dad's been doing for the past couple of years, is, it's working. It's keeping it there. So the only thing we really have to add is nitrogen because that's going to leach out. And there's some, what is it? Um, sulfur. Yep, sulfur. That's enough. That's normally people pair their nitrogen with their sulfur because those two products don't stay put. It's they hard. don't stick. Yeah. They will leach eventually. So that's that's a product you want to just put on as you use it year to year, so you don't over apply, but then you also don't want to under apply. So it's it's a fine line there, using those two types of nutrients. For the date, this this looks really good. We're bound to get some decent growing yet, and this is well established. It's gonna do it's gonna do what it was supposed to do. But yeah, October thirteenth, and now let's talk a little bit about the corn. And the one thing about this variety, this is a DeKalb variety. I think this is a 97 day and I'm not gonna be a salesman here. It's just something we happen to, we're able to get. But one thing I've noticed, even when we were chopping corn, the husks were quite opened up. And it got me quite concerned because like on this field, especially now when we started chopping, the corn I thought was awful wet yet, but it didn't look wet. The bottom leaves were drier, the husks were drier, the cob was sticking out of it already. But there was plenty of moisture, no doubt. And then, if, what is it, maybe five, six days worth of chopping by the time we got our silo full. So then when I was refilling silo, especially on this field, this is the last one where I took some rows off. We just took one round on this eight acre field and the cobs were falling They're off. They're popping off. Even, even on day number one of chopping, we noticed a little Some, bit Some, a little that. bit on the so. higher spots were a little drier. And that what that what made me really concerned if we would get, I'm not sure what causing it because we don't really have any so maybe the, insect issues here that I can tell. So maybe the, the dry midsummer had something to do with that? Yeah, 
it's something. But yeah, it's more brittle where it attaches to the stock, which it also could be the variety. Maybe this is a variety that, you know, dries down really nice yeah, or something. Yeah, because everything we chopped was the 97D, and then we got some 95, I think it is, 94, 95. I think 95D we got in our sod fields in the hills for, for cribbing too. Was it DeKalb or was it Rank? Or Rank. This is Rank. 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 I, rank. I, I, the, but years prior, two years ago, was DeKalb. I used to use DeKalb, and we did some Pioneer years ago. It didn't really matter. I think they're all good companies. I think it's just who's your salesman that's closer or more convenient. To... Yeah, that, that's like anything. And then, two, um, when it comes to corn genetics and chopping, um, we've noticed in the pile it's not a bad idea to switch up for um, preventing mold and kind of those organisms. You know what I'm talking about, where we had a variety that seems like it didn't keep as well. Well, and the guy's theory was that maybe we should switch up a variety because that variety was more prone to two different um, molds and different things. The what where it was really fussy was those really wet years, and I and I think it's just simple as that. We got more bacteria and stuff, and they claim it's in the plant over the course of the summer, and then when you try to store that up, all that stuff is in there, and it it's causing issues. Now, like last year, we didn't see none of that. We used the same inoculants, the same rates, and none of it, And but it was a more drier, more better year for the corn, I guess. And a different variety, too. So. Yeah, maybe there was a few things there. We'll never figure this out. You know, I was just talking to one of the older farmers. He's quite retired, but they were big corn and beef farmers, and they said, it seems like every year we run into something completely different than what we ran into the years earlier. And we try to change things or maybe, like you said, varieties or a different way of putting things together. And it seems like it, there's always something else that shows up that you didn't think. But as for how the corn's been drying down, we had uh, one of our agronomists, he came out today, which was really nice of him. And he used one of his handheld moisture testers. And on this field, he got uh, 24.8 percent moisture so around that 25 percent moisture and then on our no-till ground closer to the yard that was already down to yeah about 22. So and which is that one was planted a little later a few days later but, but a shorter variety yeah. yeah and it looked a lot greener when this one was drying down too but faces the sun different you know there's a, so many the one thing is around here is you know we got we got these hills in here. You got north side, south side. So you got different soil types on certain places. It makes a little difference. Mm -hmm. So we always try to, you know, it's just like making hay too. You always try to start with your sunnier fields first and work your way into those north sides. So yeah, that's a bit of a crop update. A little bit on the cover crops, a little bit on the corn. We're happy with what we're seeing. Hopefully oh, winter doesn't set in too early. And uh, to those of you that are harvesting here this fall, good luck to you. Um, Wish you a happy harvest. You bet. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more of us, you can check us out on all of our other social media platforms. Also, subscribe if you haven't. But if you made it to the end, you probably have. <laughs> and uh, anyways, make sure to check out our other videos. 